John, would you please lead us in a word of prayer? Sure, Mr. Father, we want to thank you for this time. Lord, we uh, submit us for your presence as we continue to learn about the authority that you have given us. Lord, we pray more that you would open the eyes of our understanding and help us to know more about it. And we pray, O oh God, we we would walk in that authority that you have called us in. And we pray, Lord Jesus, that we would manifest what you want us to do in this world, O oh God. Lord, we submit, Pastor, also into your mighty hands and ask for your grace to be with her as she teaches, O oh God. We pray for the rest of the class that they would be able to join soon and we will all be able to learn together, O oh God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you so much, John. Uh, we've been uh, studying about you know different realms where we can take authority. So today we are at chapter 13. Uh, we have moved on to more practical chapters now where uh, we will look at ways and methods, although you can't really box up, you know, what, uh, um, how authority is exercised, there are some uh, common practices uh, based on common observation that are very helpful. So we are moving on to more practical subjects now. Let me see. Uh, it's likely that we might uh, complete the portions well ahead of time. I hope so. Uh, that way you will have a couple of uh, weeks, you know, for, for you to do your assignments as well. So, uh, yeah. So let's uh, get into chapter 13 here. Uh, this is about exercising authority in deliverance. So we've seen, um, you know, so much of this in scripture. We see that the Lord Jesus cast out spirits and uh, he exercised his authority in doing this. Okay, So Matthew 8, 16 is a, a verse. Could somebody read that for us? Matthew 8 and verse 16, please. I'll read. <clears throat> yes, Anita. When evening had come, they brought to him many who were demon possessed, and he cast out the spirits with a word and healed all who were sick. Amen. Thank you, Anita. So it's so clear, isn't it, that Jesus was able to cast out demons with a word. So he did function in this way. Uh, Jesus also. Uh, destroyed you know, the yokes and the burdens or if you want to call it oppression that the enemy put on people. So Luke 13 is a very good example. Luke 13, maybe we can read some verses from this passage as well. Uh, you can read verse 11 through, okay, uh, yeah, 10 to 13, you can, you can read. Luke 13, 10 to 13. That should be enough. Yeah, I'll read Luke 13, 10 yes. to 13. Now he was teaching in one of the synagogues on the Sabbath. And behold, there was a woman who had a spirit of infirmity 18 years and was bent over and could in no way raise herself up. But when Jesus saw her, he called her to him and said to her, Woman, you are loosed from your infirmity. Infirmity, infirmity sorry. And he laid his hands on her, and immediately she was made straight and glorified God. Mm, thank you. Thank you, uh, Nicholson, for reading that. So, you know, you see here that there was an oppression of the devil that brought about a physical manifestation. So there was a woman who was bent over. But when Jesus, uh, you know, uh, addressed the issue, which was a demon spirit in this case, the spirit left her, that bondage was broken, and she was able to straighten up. So, you know, in the same way, uh, we too can cast, uh, we too can break bondages that people uh, may have and be uh, suffering with. So, destroying bondages, you or could call it yokes, burdens, oppression of the devil. Then uh, stopping demonic works. 
Okay, stopping demonic works is something uh, where the authority of Jesus was seen. Uh, one good example is when he spoke to the storm. Okay. Uh, it is likely that the storm was a demonic uh, activity, uh, but yeah, some may even say that no, it was a natural, natural, uh, uh, you know, occurrence that was trying to stop them. But in any case, you know, he spoke to the storm and uh, he said, be, "Peace, be still." So it's a command which he issued, and he was able to exercise his authority. So you see here, in all the things that we are discussing, what did Jesus do? Exousia, right? The power, what is that translated to authority? The authority which he had, he used it. Now think about it. How good is the authority if we, you know, keep it packed up in, in uh, the cupboard? No use. It has to be put to use. Only then it is valuable. So uh, we've discussed this early on in our, in our study of authority. If you take a traffic police and, uh, you know, this uh, traffic police is uh, not, willing to wear their uniform and not willing to uh, you know show their hand actions to regulate traffic they may be a traffic police by the government they can have a certificate in their hand which says you are traffic police but no use because authority is not used but in the case of Jesus what are we seeing you know we see that he was using his authority wherever he saw any demonic activity he used it so uh, it is something for us to learn from. Okay, if I'm experiencing something where um, I know that there is, there seems to be a demonic interference, come on, I have the authority, let me put it to work, let me put it to use. Okay, so now we will look at some practical guidelines about how we can uh, put this authority to use and very specifically in ministering deliverance to people okay deliverance is a term which we use for casting out demons generally that's what it means so if i'm ministering deliverance to someone it means i'm casting out demons and i'm you know breaking destroying the uh, influence or the work of demonic powers over the life of that person so that's the meaning. Now, uh, if we look at the way people have studied deliverance, uh, there is a categorization, you know, that uh, that uh, is spoken of in, in Christendom. It's called ground level warfare and then strategic level warfare. So what does it mean? See, ground level warfare is more of a personal level uh, where um, you know, somebody is demon possessed and we are ministering deliverance to them. So at a personal level, when we are, uh, we are casting out demons, that is known as ground level warfare. Okay. Strategic level warfare would be more of, you know, we said there are principalities, powers of, of uh, darkness, sp uh, sp rulers of wickedness, in the heavenly place. So we, we know that there is this whole hierarchy of uh, demonic powers. And uh, when you consider and study the hierarchy of these demonic powers, we also said that they're very specialized, isn't it? So some uh, will attack people at a personal level, but then there are those who are, um, you know, functioning over a region, functioning over a nation, you know, things like that. So at a different level uh, in their hierarchy. So that would be more of strategic level of spiritual warfare. So, you know, that uh, good practices in that would be, we'll look at it briefly later on. But our course here is mainly focusing on the uh, ground level warfare okay? which is ministering deliverance in casting out a demon and so forth so in strategic level it, it would be good for the churches to sort of come together it would be good for people to come together in the city and pray together to be of one heart um, you, you know and pray regularly all these things matter uh, as far as strategic level is concerned so strategic level is another it's another discussion. So uh, you may not find insights on that uh, you know, in, in, the, in today's class or a couple of classes ahead. We will specifically touch on the ground level, ground level warfare.
okay so when it comes to deliverance you know the best thing not just deliverance uh anything you know anything that we are involved in maybe prophesying okay good thing to do is we go back to scriptures and we read passages on that topic so prophecy it'll be good to read you know okay first corinthians 12 first corinthians 14 and then read about people who are ministering in the prophetic uh, uh, gift or the prophetic anointing the prophetic calling study about them how did they do it how did the spirit of god work through them so what happens is very scripturally our faith will be built up in in those matters so coming to deliverance you know sometimes what happens you know we want to read oh this book that book not that it's it's bad or it's wrong or anything we can but it's always good to have a very strong scriptural foundation so i generally do this this is something that i practice uh i try to get a scriptural foundation of you know different topics so i do read books but i would go to a book on prayer after i read all the scriptures about prayer in the bible okay because there can be many opinions that people have and those opinions need not necessarily be right as far as scripture is concerned so it's good to first rely on the word of god meditate on what the bible says the verses say for a while just meditate when you feel like okay you know i have a sense of what this is talking about then you want to read some books or listen to some sermons to get an idea of practical application and also by that time you would be in a better position to discern okay is, is what they're saying right or is it wrong we would have some idea because scripturally you know, we've already seen what the word of god says so that's how you build on so coming to casting out demons the best thing to do is to meditate on incidents where jesus cast out demons in the word of god now uh, you might ask what am i going to get from it no observe how he used his authority okay we might want to read it once twice thrice 20 times 30 times but just going over those passages you recognize okay you know this is how he used the authority he spoke a word he commanded uh he um uh, you know mm, uh he spoke to the demon uh, or he had compassion on the people and he set them free so it's it's really helping us get a perspective on how did jesus do deliverance and uh not just that uh, another great uh, thing is that uh, you know romans 10 17 it says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of god so as we are meditating on passages regarding deliverance in this case faith is being built up more and more faith more and more faith so then what happens i am in a situation where i have to minister deliverance what is important when we minister deliverance faith so i'm carrying that faith in order to uh, issue uh, or release that authority so that is the reason why it is a good practice to meditate on scriptures so there are many scriptures given here we may not have time to go through all of them maybe we will look at uh, maybe three passages and that will really help so uh yeah i think three passages is is good let's look at three uh okay so can somebody please turn to matthew chapter 4 verses 23 and 24 any one person uh, let me know who that that would be matthew 4 23 24 who's gonna read that Okay, I'll, I'll just randomly assign, uh, you could please say yes or a no to save time. Uh, okay, okay, John is going to read that. Wonderful. So uh, another person could please read um, Mark 1 verses 21 through 28. Uh, who will that be? Okay, Jeffina will read. Great. That's nice. Then um, Matthew 8 verses 28 to 
34 another person could read that please who would that be yeah i don't see any okay okay nicholson will read. great so that's nice let's go ahead and read it then uh let's begin with matthew 4 23 and 24 and Jesus went about all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues, preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and healing all kinds of sickness and all kinds of disease among the people. Then his fame went throughout all Syria, and they brought to him all sick people who were afflicted with various diseases and torments, and those who were demon-possessed, epileptics and paralytics, and he healed them. Yes, thank you, John. Thank you. So, you know, we see that, right? Healing, preaching. He was doing his ministry, which had all these components. And he, um, uh, you know, he healed, which means he set people free from torments, from, uh, you know, demon possession. So that's quite clear. So thank you, John. Thank you for that. Jeffina, can you go next, please? 21 to 28, right, Pastor? Yes, you're right. Mark 1, 21 to 28. Okay. Jesus and his companions went to the town of Capernaum. When the Sabbath day came, he went into the synagogue and began to teach. The people were amazed at his teaching, for he taught with real authority, quite unlike the teachers of religious law. Suddenly, a man in the synagogue, who was possessed by an evil spirit, cried out, Why are you interfering with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. But Jesus reprimanded him. Be quiet, come out of the man, he ordered. At that, the spirit, the evil spirit screamed, then threw the man into a convulsion, and then came out of him. Amazement gripped the audience, and they began to discuss what had happened. What sort of new teaching is this? They asked excitedly. It has such an authority, even evil spirits obey his orders. The news about Jesus spread quickly throughout the entire region of Galilee. Amen. 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 Thank you, Jeffina. So now you, you share your observations with me about Jesus' uh, deliverance ministry. We just looked at the passage, Mark 1, 21 to 28. So anything you can share from it? Um, I just want to say that Jesus has a great authority and um, Satan, he knows the power of authority. I feel that like he's so much afraid uh, he's asking why are you here you come to destroy us so the authority makes the devil so much weak and he's so much afraid so it makes me feel like when i use the authority the devil is so much afraid of us yeah thank you thank you jeffina good observation that's right because in verse 24 we see that isn't it let us alone what have we to do with you? Jesus of Nazareth, did you come to destroy us? So Satan is afraid of the authority that Jesus carried. Good. So anything else? Any other observations in this passage? How did Jesus use his authority? Jesus commanded his authority. Very good. Very nice, Anita. So verse 25, isn't it? He's, what does he do? He rebukes. The moment there is a manifestation, he just rebukes that demon. That's the way in which he has used his authority. Okay. And he, what does he say? He says, be quiet and come out of him. And he issues a command. Okay. So this is the way we are observing. Okay. This is how Jesus ministered the power of God in this situation. Okay, great. Thank you. Anything else? Any observation is fine. Any other observation? Others?
मैम इन वर्स ट्वेंटी सेवन वेन जीजस कमांडेड इज अथॉरिटी द अनकलीन स्पिरिट ओबे हिम that's right yeah see so wow that is a that is a wonderful observation so what is the meaning the demonic realm responds to the authority of god okay so that gives us so much confidence wow uh, thanks uh, thanks anita for sharing that so uh, the lis- the spirits listen and they obey it says you know obey is more like uh no questions asked right you just do it obey him good very nice anything else okay so i think you're getting the point we can we can look at the passage think about it right and and see so many things in it like i'm just seeing that the demon spoke so when we are ministering deliverance is there a possibility that the demon might speak yeah maybe it can then <clears throat> you know jesus issues a command to be quiet Okay, so then, yeah, that is also something. So when demons speak, what should we do? We generally see Jesus saying, "Be quiet." He doesn't engage in too much of a conversation with the demon. Okay, so then, yeah, we too can do that. We can command the demon to be quiet. Uh, what else do we see here? You know, the unclean spirit. It says. okay so that is what a demon spirit is termed uh, in this particular situation now <clears throat> we don't know exactly why it is called as an unclean spirit but yeah okay that's an observation fine then when it came out of the person in this case you see that it convulsed him and cried out with a loud voice and he came out of him so is it possible that when we cast a demon out that a person can behave like this that you know maybe they they are convulsed they shake uh they fall there is a, a scream and the spirit comes out like that yeah there is a possibility because we have observed that here so you know in this way when we are meditating more and more there are lots of observations spiritual observations practical observations so then you know it it is equipping us that okay fine this is this is how jesus ministered deliverance but at the end of the day what is a beautiful thing you know i heard uh, uh somebody say that uh, jesus was not afraid to minister deliverance see he went to the synagogue and he found somebody with an unclean spirit there uh now he could have been concerned if i cast out a demon what will they do you know will they allow me to come back to the synagogue or not but jesus was very bold he knew that part of his ministry was to um, bring freedom to the captives so he he got the demon out of the man okay so i heard somebody say that you know, sometimes we are so scared uh, about demons that you know we would rather have you know demons in people and them attending church than uh you know casting them out so jesus was not like that he was not afraid of casting out dealing he he noticed there is an issue here there is a problem this man needs to be set free and he did it and what was the reaction in this case there seems to be a positive reaction of the people <laughs> they are very thrilled they say oh see how he teaches see what authority uh, he has that he commands even unclean spirits and they obey him and then he his fame so people are talking about what jesus has done so that is uh, those are some observations from this passage now let's go to another passage um uh, i said uh, 
yeah Ma matthew 8 28 to 34 so nicholson please go ahead okay matthew 8 28 to 34 when he had come to the other side to the country of the gurgur sinis there there met him two demons demon possessed men coming out of the tombs exceedingly fierce so that no one could pass that way and suddenly they cried out saying what have we done to done sorry what have we to do with you jesus you son of god have you come here to torment us before the time now a good way off from them there was a herd of many swine feeding so the demons begged him saying if you cast us out permit us to go away into those herd of swine and he said to them go so when he had come out when they had come out they went into the herd of swine and suddenly the whole herd of swine ran violently down the steep place into the sea and perished in the water then those who kept them fled and they went away into the city and told everything including what had happened to the demon possessed men and behold the whole city came out to meet jesus and when they saw him they begged him to depart from their region yeah thank you so much uh, nicholson for reading that so what observations do we have here just feel free any anything that you noted Can I say something? Yes, yes, Isaac. Yes, um, we observe, like we ex uh, establish in demonology, that uh, the spirit world, that is the evil world, recognize the authority of the power of light. So, Very nice. the, yeah, we see that yeah, they recognize straight away, they see Jesus, they recognize that he had authority to just cast them out. So, in fact, they made a request. <laughs> Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Isaac. Good observation. So, you see, straight away, so there were these men, but when they saw Jesus, it says suddenly they cried out, what have we to do with you, Jesus? So, they recognized. They recognized the authority. So, this also. So, does the, the, the um, you know, kingdom of darkness or demons when they see us, do they do they recognize that hey, this person, born again, saved, uh, you know, filled with the Holy Spirit, carrying the authority, do they recognize it very much? Even before Jesus can say something, they are the ones speaking up. So they recognize authority. Wonderful. Uh, uh, Nicholson, you had something to say? I thought I saw your hand go up. Yeah, it was the same thing, but oh. yeah, but, but one thing I had to, which I, I don't know if I'm right or wrong, but I think um, this is the only place where Jesus permitted what the demons requested. Yeah. So I found that interesting in the passage. Mm, yeah, I know, I know, uh, but uh, it's it's kind of uh, I wonder why no that he heard them. Uh, and he sent them into pigs. So that's true. So they asked, they had, a, the demons had a request. And then, you know, Jesus kind of uh, listens to that. Uh, but okay. Another thing that we can see here is, remember I said, demons are disembodied spirits. So they were in the men. When Jesus cast them out, they go into animals. Okay. So, what we were discussing earlier is correct. They can inhabit, we said, people. They can inhabit animals. They can also inhabit objects or spaces. So, yeah, 
So that is again another observation that we have here. Then uh, you notice that the men were very, they were exceedingly fierce. So the manifestation of the, you know, the uh, demons or uh, demon possession through those two men, it can come. It can happen in different ways. Okay, in some passages we see that the demon threw the uh, child into the water, into the fire. So that's a different way in which that demon is functioning. Here, however, what's happening to these men? They're very fierce to the extent that no one could pass that way. So is it is it okay for us to uh, understand that they were violent? They were scary. Uh, yeah, possible, possible. That's how those men were. So then, you know, the, the remember we said that demons can take charge of the faculties of a human being. They can slowly try to control more and more of the person. So here, it seems like full possession where the men had no control whatsoever and the demons were using them literally to do what they wanted to do. Okay, so that is another observation. Anything else you want to add? It's so interesting, isn't it? There's so much. Yeah. You can share your thoughts. Yes. Mine is a different. Now, there is a debate that since the, Jesus cast demons and they went into the pigs, so we should not eat pigs because they are not holy. Okay, okay, okay. So, uh is that a question? Yeah, I need you to throw light on it. Should we eat pigs? Oh, we don't eat. Mm -hmm. Okay, fine. <clears throat> yeah, thank you, uh, Paul. So I'll just see if I can get a passage of scripture here for you. Okay, so uh, coming to Acts chapter 10 and um, verse 15. Okay, so this passage talks about... Um, uh, one second, let me post it first. Acts 10 and verse 15. Uh, it says, and a voice spoke to him again the second time, what God has cleansed, you must not call common. So Peter had that uh, vision of, a, um, you know, a sheet coming down from heaven and all kinds of animals. Now, if you look at the Old Testament, yes, there were uh, laws. God gave the people many laws, you know, regarding hygiene, regarding eating, uh, and at that time, he did forbid people from uh, eating, you know, some uh, certain foods. I, I don't know what it's called. I think some kosher diet or something. So uh, definitely, you know, the, the devout Jews were following those, those diets. Uh, and that is why when Peter sees all these animals uh, in, in the vision uh, and, you know, he, he is prompted to go eat those animals, he says no. You know, I will not touch unclean animals. That's when, you know, a voice speaks to him and says that what God has cleansed, you must not call common. So again, you know, it's as if you see a change of a, an Old Testament law. Okay. So what we do is we will see there are many uh, laws in the Old Testament, but you have to look at it. After the cross, after the cross, if you find a very clear cut change in scripture, you can take it as, okay, you know, I don't, I no longer need to follow that old law. So when it comes to clean animals, unclean animals and a certain, uh, you know, food law, which God gave in the Old Testament, okay, don't eat uh, pigs and all. If you look at the New Testament, it sort of negates that and it says, okay, don't worry about it anymore. So it's okay, you know, to to eat pigs is what I would say based on you know 
the, what we have seen here. Uh, and uh, yes, the vision was uh, in the context. It was about something completely different. So basically what Jesus was telling Peter or God was telling Peter was, you must not consider the Gentiles as unclean. Because up until that time, you know, Peter also, uh, by personality, was only passionate about uh, ministering to the Jews. And God had to make a change to that and say, look, now that the Lord Jesus has died on the cross, the, the uh, sa salvation has to be preached to all tribes, tongues, nations, everybody. So now it's out for everyone. So, you know, why don't you start ministering to the Gentiles also? So God had to work in Peter's heart. And so he gave him the vision. So that is the context. But then, you know, we are also able to see that uh, God sort of makes it clear that, okay, there's no clean, unclean animals uh, anymore. So, yeah. Did you get your answer, Paul? Uh, yes, yes. Okay, great. Thank you. All right. And Zeli, uh, good observation also. She's asking in verse 34, why is it that the people of the region begged Jesus to depart? So earlier in what Jeffina read, we saw that his fame went all around. So when we do God's work, you know, sometimes there's a positive response. People will appreciate you and they say, wow, Jesus, you cast out a demon. But now in this case, it is likely that the people who own the pigs, you know, they had a loss. So when the demons went into the pigs, what happened? The pigs went and, you know, they jumped into the water, they died. So what is this economical loss? for the people. And it's so unfortunate, isn't it? They're not seeing what Jesus has done with the power of God to set free people whom he has made in the image of God. Now, those things are not valuable in the sight of these uh, so-called owners of those animals. They just notice that they had a loss. The pigs died. Come on, Jesus, we don't want you anymore because... You came and, you know, our business is in jeopardy now. So can you please go to some other place? So negative reaction. Okay. But what did Jesus do? Same thing. He did God's work. He set people free. But this is how, you know, the, the, the audience, that's the reason we say uh, we should look for God's approval. Sometimes, you know, the response of the people around will be very positive. Sometimes it will be very negative. So if you're just going by that, you can't do God's work. So Zeli, does it answer your question? Yes, Pastor. Thank you. Okay. Wonderful. So nice that, you know, you're all uh, observing all these things. And Jeffina shares, I loved how the demons couldn't even stand the presence of Jesus. Jesus didn't command, speak anything, but they were so much afraid uh, just by knowing that Jesus is here. Yeah, very true, uh, Jeffina. So the kingdom of darkness, as also uh, another uh, one of our students pointed out, they are aware and they are afraid. So then you imagine how much courage we should have. So see, we only looked at some three uh, passages and that took quickly. And we learned so much. Uh, now, if we can take time to study uh, several other passages, and it is listed here in our notes, okay? We're not going to look at them one by one. I encourage you to do it in your personal time. Uh, there is a Canaanite woman's daughter, whom Jesus sets free in Matthew 15, verses 21 to 28. You can study about that. A young boy with an evil spirit in Matthew 17. You know, that's the time they bring the boy and they're not able to cast out the demon. So it's like, you know, you have a practical class, isn't it? So then they fail. But personally, you know, they come back and ask Jesus, Jesus, why did we fail? So you see how the disciples are being trained. They are asking Jesus questions and Jesus is giving them answers. Oh, this kind shall not go out, you know, except by fasting and prayer. So he's helping them and guiding them on how they must do it the next time. So if they come with fasting and prayer, uh, how will that help? It will help 
build up the faith of the individual you know when we are prayed up when we have fasted what happens uh, our spiritual man is so uh, become stronger and the noise of the flesh is under control you know uh, and so we are in a better place to exercise our authority and our faith is also stronger okay so all these reasons um why one must fast and pray so from that passage we will understand okay fasting and prayer really helps then a dumb man demonized you can study about that then blind and dumb man demonized so just go ahead luke 13 we saw that you know woman who was bound by satan when jesus uh, set her free she straightened up so uh, when we study you know there are so many observations which we can make one is that jesus i'm just summarizing some of the common things that you will notice jesus ministered with great authority he never he never went to demons and said please can you uh, if if you don't mind can you just leave this no in fact people were so amazed to see his authority so jesus ministered with authority that that is something we take away from it then he commanded these demons okay and uh, what else do we see they came out uh from the people and in in all the passages that we read uh we we understand that it's like right away they came out of the people so that is the standard so can demons come out right away when we issue a command yes they can okay then some occasions we observe that these demons try to speak back to jesus and they said oh you are the son of god allow us to go into the pigs so sometimes there is that happening but not all the time some other times he just sees the demon he commands it it comes out okay so then uh, uh, that also we can uh, we understand uh, at times when they spoke what did jesus do he usually said be quiet okay so then uh, you know when we get into deliverance ministry we need not engage in too much of a conversation with demons then um what else do we see some more observations yeah so in uh, matthew 12 28 we see that he cast out demons by the spirit of god okay so then that gives us a lot of confidence so when i go before a uh, a uh, uh, a demon and then the demon you know usually it'll try to intimidate us and say all kinds of things then i won't get scared because i know that hey it's not it's not just me isn't it i am coming with the authority which i have in christ jesus and how is the demon going to leave this person by the spirit of god by the holy spirit so i'm depending on that to see the person set free okay so uh that again is is something that we must keep in our hearts that it is by the spirit of god jesus cast out demons we too can cast out demons by the spirit of god so you now we get great confidence by uh, going through these passages and you know just getting faith out of it about uh, the authority and uh, uh, you know the way the authority was released and ministered to the people so now we will move on to general instructions for deliverance so this is very very practical stuff uh yeah so how how do we come up with these uh, instructions this is based on people's experiences okay um and and that's how so one is always operate out of love now because we are referring to deliverance as spiritual warfare we have that you know sense of seriousness and anger towards the devil isn't it uh, that's why when we uh, speak to the demon it's usually a command we are commanding them they have to obey it so going uh, with this you know as as uh, uh, our understanding of deliverance we should not forget that ultimately we love the person okay all this anger and uh, all this um, you know firmness is against the demon not against the person so to have the right motivation is very important when we minister deliverance so love the person another uh, uh, 
thing about right motivation is that we are not seeking to um, you know gain some badge so that i can tell oh if somebody asks me ma'am how many spirits have you cast out oh just now i i cast out 99 uh, very soon it's going to be 100 you know like i'm just adding it to my resume or my bio data to show that wow you see this is how uh, god has helped me exercise authority or i am doing this for 15 years now even if i say things like that why am i saying it what is my motivation is my motivation really to glorify god or is it to um show people that i am so great or you know uh, that uh, god is using me mightily so motivation of the heart is so so critical one is uh, love for the person i truly um, love that person with the love of jesus so when i'm casting out a demon it is not so that i can say oh you are 100 number 100 and I cast out the demon. Come on, you know, this This is how powerfully God is using me. So we should be very careful. Many times when we talk about motivation, outside people will not know. People will only look at uh, our ministry and say, oh, all these flattering things about us. Wow, pastor, you are doing so nicely, so well. You're carrying such great authority, anointing. But you should, know, you should not let that you know, mess with our mind. We know that, hey, I am walking in submission to Christ. I'm depending on God. You know, it's like uh, John 15. Without him, I can do nothing. So uh, God, thank you that this brother has been set free. Thank you that this sister has been set free. Bless them, uh, you know, help them grow in you. And God, I'm grateful that you're working through my life. So when we maintain right attitude, okay, and don't become proud, because there is a tendency, we human beings, we have that flesh, no? We have that tendency that we want to be recognized or uh, praised, uh, but avoid all that. Motivation is number one. Whatever we are doing in the ministry, motivation is number one. And uh, generally, motivation is before God. You know, we can fool the whole world, but we can't fool God. So what is the... What is the you know, thing in my heart. Why? Question. Why? Why am I doing what I am doing? So if I have the right motivation to honor God, to love people, then yes, this ministry is going to be a blessed ministry. Okay. So more practical stuff. Uh, to be prepared. Okay. Now we may not be able to predict you know, when we are going to encounter a situation where um, there's demonic oppression or, you know, somebody is possessed with a demon, we might just go thinking, okay, I'm going to um, share from God's word today. And you go there and suddenly, you know, you have this one situation where you have to cast out a demon. So the best thing to do is, that is why, remember when we did prayer and intercession, that course also, we said daily daily uh, time in prayer, daily time, uh, you know, praying in the spirit, daily time in meditating in God's word, and as regularly as possible, you know, if we can also have these disciplines of fasting, uh, what happens? It's like day in and day out, we are ready. We have, we have the scouts and guides uh, in school, they used to teach us the motto, be prepared. Be prepared. So I think it applies for the believers also, isn't it? Uh, always be prepared because we don't know when uh, we will be in a situation where we have to uh, apply the authority of God and release the power of God. So it is helpful to maintain a lifestyle where we are daily strengthened in prayer and fasting i mean not don't fast daily but regularly you know if we can have uh, fasting in our lifestyle okay so let's do one thing we kind of um, at the end of the first session let's come back we'll discuss more and it's very practical so i encourage you if you have any questions comments observations from your experience please share it will make our learning more um, uh, you know enriched Okay, so, okay, let's go for a break now. We'll meet in 10 minutes. We'll meet at 11 o'clock. Thank you.